Welcome to another Dirty Bomb discussion video. With last week's Thursday developer video talking about a new premium currency called RADS being added to the game, I thought it was a good opportunity to talk about monetization, currencies, and all things money in Dirty Bomb. So what is changing? Well, they're basically removing all the direct sale options from Dirty Bomb and introducing a new currency in its place. If you've only ever played in a free-to-play manner, I don't expect you'll see changes to how things operate for you. The currencies have been a hot topic in gaming for a while, though. They can provide a midpoint for purchases, but can also be used to obfuscate the true cost of in-game items. They are often sold in bundles of larger quantities than is required for a typical normal purchase, and also provide more opportunities to sell you on buying even more of the currency with extra incentives such as discount rates for larger quantities. You've probably seen other titles take this to even larger extremes, and this is particularly prevalent in mobile games. They basically layer the transactions on top of each other, which would require users to make multiple mental calculations to determine actual pricing. For example, Let's imagine you're playing a mobile game, it's an MMO that you play in your spare time, and you want to level up faster to use higher tier weapons and armor, that sort of thing. One example that they might use might be buying gold coins. So you spend $2.99 on 500 gold coins, plus an additional 25 for buying in bulk. The XP boosters you want are only purchasable in diamonds though and you get four diamonds for every 175 coins. The boosters are three diamonds each. So do you know how much a booster is actually worth in real money? Well, is there a way to calculate that cost? Sure there is. And indeed, some of you could probably do the multiple levels of conversions in your head. But I know that when I'm playing games, especially on a phone, I'm not in the best environment to think about mathematical puzzles and things like that. You may have noticed that even though you buy diamonds in packs of four in that example, the booster only costs three. Apparently this helps create a feeling known as loss aversion. You'll see the extra currency you have bought as a loss if there's no way to spend it. You'll see it kicking around in your inventory. So the pressure is then there to spend even more money for more in-game currency to add to it to eliminate that perceived loss. So the store prices are generated not only out of step with the bundles of currency you buy, so that you buy more than intended, but are also pitched at prices that will tend to leave small amounts left over. Used in this way, it can be all about creating situations where you want to spend and spend more than you might have first intended. So let's turn to RADS. Dirty Bomb has not gone for that complex, multi-layered and arguably really quite cynical setup. They have removed direct sales and added a single currency. In games business terms, DB has a hard and soft currency. The soft being credits that you are free to earn at a decent rate, and the hard being the new RADS. So are there any benefits to the consumer in having this hard currency system? Or is the whole thing just about making more money? Well, be in no doubt, Splash Damage is a business. They make a game you can play for free, but they do need money coming back in to keep the lights on and pay their staff. So yeah, I'm sure the possibility of getting better revenue back from the game certainly appeals. There are other opportunities that this opens for consumers, though. They can give out rads in ways they could never give out real money. So things like daily bonuses or other incentives can trickle this hard currency into the pockets of players. This means that maybe if you think the cost of a Merc or a Case or whatever is too high, but if you save up some of your bonuses for a while, and then check out how much extra currency you'd need to buy from the store, things might look more palatable to you. Similarly for competitions, we've seen Cases and whatever being given to teams in tournaments in the past, but being given rads with the ability to spend them on any part of the game would be much better. We've also seen Shu streaming recently again, and I'd imagine other promotions running up to DB 1.0 will happen too. In a similar way to how Warframe devs give out platinum to the viewers of their official stream, so rads will give Splash Damage the ability to do a similar thing. After my video a couple of weeks back talking about Steam trading, the marketplace and so on, one of the points that I raised was a lack of currency or medium of trade in the player-to-player -player trading system. 
that it was more swapping or bartering than it was replicating a normal buying or selling type scenario. Well, with RADs, this opens up an interesting prospect. What if RADs could be tradable? That situation I described, where I wanted your top tier Sparks Containment War card, is partially relieved if you're open to taking RADs for it. It's not a complete solution, of course. It's not the same or as flexible as Steam Wallet funds by a long shot, but it gives active players and DB a means to transfer funds during a trade while that money stays within the game. In fact, this is how Warframe trading works. You can trade Prime Blueprints for Platinum. There are people in Warframe who play for free, but can generate in-game currency by selling the items they find back to other players who don't have time but do have currency to put into the game. It's certainly an interesting prospect for RADs moving forward. So am I a fan of RADs being added to the game? Well, I'm not exactly sure if you can be a fan of an in-game currency, but if it's done sensibly and not in an overly cynical way, it can be a tool that lets developers generate revenue and even allow users to save up the free stuff and buy items at lower actual cost. It can add more flexibility to how rewards are given to players. For example, what about a holiday season community event like last year, with some rads as the final unlock? If consumers are smart about how they spend their money, and yes, even make spreadsheets yourselves if you're not good at mental calculations, I know I'm not. If they make informed decisions that haven't been deliberately obfuscated by complex hierarchies or differing currencies, I can see it as an almost happy mid-ground for Dirty Bomb to generate more revenue, while also keeping it free to play and not pay to win. Am I glad it's been added to the game? Well, direct pricing is obviously simple, but it doesn't have the flexibility that we've talked about already. That other games use a single currency system like this doesn't mean that it itself is a good idea, but that some of those titles have what many consider to be decent monetization models means that there is hope that some fair middle ground can be found for RADs in DB. RADs and their implementation are something that I'm sure will evolve over time, and certainly be watching to see how things progress. Monetization is a contentious topic, so I'm sure you'll have opinions on this, so please leave a comment below right now. I read every single one of them. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting subscribe. I appreciate it hugely. If you want to follow me on social media, then there are links in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.